Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are having a fantastic day. So today's episode is gonna be an uh, upload on why the Northeast could have a snowy winter if a neutral pattern forms. So last time I uploaded one, couple, uh, I think yesterday, yeah, yesterday, about the La Nina and what winter would look like if a La Nina pattern formed. Well, now I'm uploading why the Northeast could have a cold and snowy winter if a neutral pattern forms. And uh, I'm going to probably include this here on it because uh, it's it's very likely or possible that, very possible that a neutral pattern may form, in fact. And today we'll be getting an update from the ENSO outlook from NOAA, so we'll see what they're showing. But um, uh, if, you know, if you want to support this channel, if you want to... Uh, get more of these videos. I've been uh, putting out quite a bit lately. If you want to uh, subscribe, you can do so. It's red if you have not subscribed yet, and it will turn white once you are subscribed, and that means you are subscribed, and it will also say so. So, could really consider doing that. Uh, it helps this channel a lot and helps it grow. So, uh, uh, thank you for that. Now, uh, this is again the older data, and um, right now. Um, I, you know, I want to show you what their models are showing, and I already showed you this a couple days ago, but I have a lot of new viewers, so for those that have already seen my La Nina video, you could skip ahead a little bit when I start showing the, the effects of the neutral pattern and the ENSO, or you could just watch it again, but I'll be, again, explaining how the ENSO works and how this whole thing uh, plays out and, you know, how basically this is gonna, um, you know, play out and what what an El Nino and La Nina is. And I know I already explained that once, but I'll be explaining it again, so you could skip forward again. Like I've said, so majority of the models predict a weak El Nino to continue, but uh, this was uh, from June, and we'll get an update in, uh, today, actually. Uh, Thursday, the second of the month. Se second Thursday of the month, and you could see that I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty um, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, the neutral is the zone between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. So right here and right there, you could see there are actually several models, quite a bit, that are going in that neutral zone. There are only there is only one model that goes into a La Nina zone, but, which is why last uh, video I said it's most likely not going to happen. However, it's still a possibility, um, and you know this could definitely still change as the models are going to get updated. However, you can see that uh, between 0 0.5 and 1, uh, which is a weak El Nino, there's, again, quite a few as well. So we'll just have to see because a short little deviance, a little tiny difference could mean between a moderate El Nino or a neutral or even possibly a La Nina. So, you know, we just have to keep an eye on this. And these are the three main averages, this Climate Prediction Center, uh, Console, and another model, DYN average, and Statistical Average. And you can see that's what's forecast to happen. So if you don't know what an El Nino is, it's characterized by positive O and I greater than or equal to 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. So that basically means if a three-month period um, or a three-month period uh, or longer is it, are the temperatures in off the coast of South America are greater than 0 0.5 Celsius in terms of the anomaly or deviance from average. And a La Nina is basically the opposite three-month period, but uh, less than or equal to 0 0.5 degrees Celsius from the average. So, uh, if you were to look, um, yeah, it basically explains it to you right here, and that's really not that important to know. Now, these are the different, <sighs> sorry, these are the different Nino regions. You can see Nino 4, Nino 3.4, Nino 3, and Nino 1 plus 2. So, these are, you know, maybe, may, may not seem and uh, as important as just uh, the, you know, the general warm or cold regime, but these regions actually play a role as well. Notice how here's Australia, Papua New Guinea area, and uh, here's Mexico, Central America, South America, uh, Peru right there. So a lot of these uh, areas, you know, have an impact from this El Nino and all across the world in El Nino or La Nino the ENSO has an impact on and it, you know, like for example if this region here is cold and this region here is cold uh, and this here is warm you may think that's just a weird El Nino well uh, because usually an El Nino is warm all throughout well that's called the Motoka El Nino which has even different impacts from a regular El Nino and you know that's just because this Nino 4 and Nino 1 plus 2 are cold so that was a possibility of last year this year it doesn't seem like there will be Motokai seems more of a between a neutral and a weak El Nino however again this could change um, we could be looking at a La Nina very slim chances at this point but that could quickly 
quickly go up. I want to emphasize that uh, it's not out of the question. And this is basically uh, what a neutral pattern looks like because, you, you know, this is about what a neutral will be for uh, if a neutral pattern takes hold, what will the northeast see? And you can see it's kind of in between. It's not there's no really, you know, this is what a neutral looks like. And that's that's it. That's all to it. No, there's no such thing as that. You could say that about El Nino or La Nina and then uh, go off the. Uh, the, the the temperature contrast, you know, how cold it is based on the strength. And you can see that when it's a neutral, it's more just yellow, orange, blue, kind of in between. Um, neither El Nino or La Nino, hence that's why it's called a neutral in between zone. And this is what a uh, ENSO neutral winter looks like for the U. Yes, and you can see that there are a little bit differences. There are some differences from the uh, La Nina pattern. Um, the wet and warm south is still there uh, in place. The subtropical jet uh, stays a little bit further to the south, while the polar jet stream uh, dips a little bit further to the south than the La Nina. You can see the cold is more sustained during a neutral pattern. Uh, during a La Nina, it's more uh, as brief cold shots that come through during a uh, during a La Nina or a neutral. It's more sustained. Again, it's most of winter staying there. And, you know, whenever we get a warm, wet storm coming up into the cold conditions, we could get a lot of snow. This is why I think the neutral pattern would take hold. Um, the northeast would see a lot of snow so if you want to see snow and you live in the northeast the neutral pattern would be in your biggest interest however um even if it was a weak el nino we could still definitely see some large nor'easters and some big cold just i don't think as big cold as with a neutral pattern but um you know in terms of cold last year we had a weak el nino and we had some of the coldest outbreaks in the 20 30 years last year uh, i mean here across the midwest plains northeast it was literally the coldest winter in 35 years here so it was very chilly very cold and it was you know it, it wasn't a neutral pattern it was a weak el nino but usually typically with a neutral pattern you see more sustained cold maybe not as significant this is basically again uh analogs i found this online and it's uh showing long-term average of a bunch of years december through february um and these all these years are neutral patterns you could see that most of the country is below average not a single region is above average some are neutral but most are uh, slightly to quite a bit below average during a neutral pattern and if we go to uh, my analogs that i formed uh, because you know i love doing this for you guys I love making these analogs for you because people seem to like them. You can see I compiled a bunch of neutral years and ENSO neutral years, the ENSO, and you can see that I didn't fit every single one of them because there was only a certain limit I could put in, but I tried going um, from the oldest to uh, just oldest through the newest, but skipping a few. But generally, you know, I didn't just like concentrate the years from uh, the 20th century or the 21st century. I, I, there's some even here from a, um, from the 19th century. You could see uh, right there. Uh, where was it? It was somewhere in here. But uh, basically, you could see December wasn't that cold. Um, it was. It was. You know, it wasn't too terribly cold uh, in terms of the anomalies. But definitely still there. But if you look at the January, say, time frame of this, you could see that there are, um, it's it's much more colder. The Sorry, this is February. I skipped over January. I'll show you in just a minute. But February, you can see it's a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more cold, especially across southern Canada and the northern U.S. A little bit warm, maybe across the southeast. But again, that's where the storms form, the wet and warm st storms. And they could really produce those big uh, nor'easters and produce a lot of snow. And then you can see this is March of those years. And you can see it's, it's that's just cold. That's just really cold. And anomalies are pretty big. Negative 1.5 for so many years. That's pretty significant. And you can see it marked by that dark purple color. Most of the northern, if not two-thirds of the U.S. is covered by below average. And then this is the December through, I don't yeah, I, didn't, I skipped over January, but it basically kind of looked like the February. Um, and you can see this is December through February of all the years combined. So all the years that I showed you this previous months, December, January, February, March, um, these are now the the... No, these are now the, I, I didn't include March in this analog, but I did uh, December through February, which included January in this one. And you can see it was pretty chilly. Just what that map earlier on was showing. 
um, this one right here, that cold across the north, especially the northeast, and a little bit south, allowing the storms, a little bit warmer across the south, allowing the storms to form, tap into that cold, and produce quite a bit of snow. So hopefully you enjoyed. I just wanted to give you, you know, a little inference on what a neutral pattern would do. Fairly good amounts of snow and fairly good amounts of cold, it seems, if a neutral pattern would form. It's just a matter of whether it would or wouldn't. And at this point, it's still a big question now. Or still far out, and it's a big question. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.